Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for this PRC Saltillo guest webinar. I'm Heather Prenovo, a Saltillo AT consultant and training implementation team member. I'll be moderating the webinar today along with Beth Waitliff Weaver. We're excited to have Sarah Gregory with us this afternoon to talk about preparing for the new school year with virtual therapy. She has examples of AAC teletherapy sessions and looking at strategies for parent caregiver coaching and modeling on a digital platform. We have a few housekeeping details to look at first. If you have any trouble hearing or connecting to the webinar, try logging out and then back into the webinar. If that doesn't work, you may need to restart your computer. Handouts can be found in the handouts section of the toolbar. And you can type your questions in the question window um, in the toolbar. They will be addressed by the presenter at the end if time allows. In order to receive ASHA credit for your participation today, please download the ASHA form and instructions from the materials section of the toolbar. Remember to put today's date on your form. We use this to identify the correct course number. Here are some other reminders. You must stay online on your computer the entire time to be able to get credit. If you're having difficulties and need to log back in, um, it is time stamped, so you'll be given credit for that. You will receive an email from PRC Saltillo via GoToWebinar tomorrow. This will have a link to the recording, the handouts, ASHA instructions, and forms. Your certificate of attendance will also be there. Please allow a full 24 hours for this to be sent before reaching out to PRC Saltillo to inquire about the forms. Please submit your ASHA participation form within 15 days and make sure to put the name of the class and the date in the subject line of your email when submitting it to info at printrom.com. If you don't use the ASHA CEU registry to track your CEUs, you can use the attached certificate as proof of attendance. You only need to submit the ASHA form to us if you pay for the ASHA registry and want your form sent to ASHA. Finally, a feedback survey will pop up as you leave the webinar. We value your input. We hope you take a few minutes and share your thoughts with us. The presenters and the training implementation staff re review this information and we consider suggestions when we plan future events. This is being offered for 0.15 ASHA CEUs. Um, here are Sarah's financial and non-financial disclosure statements. And PRC Saltillo is proud to sponsor our guest webinars as a platform for sharing info. Please note that the content presented in this webinar has been created by the presenters and as such may not reflect the views and opinions of PRC Saltillo or their employees. And with that, I will turn things over to Sarah. We appreciate you being here today to share your expertise with us. All right, hi everyone. I think my webcam is on and we can get started. So today um, we are going to talk all about AAC teletherapy um, and we're going to do kind of more of a deep dive, like my little graphic there, of uh, sort of what I've been doing to make AAC teletherapy successful for my students. Um, so this is me, Sarah Gregory. I'm a speech language pathologist in a public school district in central New York, um, Ithaca, New York. I'm also the district's assistive technology consultant. So um, I consult on all our kids that use AAC and any types of AT. Um, for the slides, you can use that QR code or that bit.ly link. Um, if you wanna use the QR code to get the slides, just open the camera um, on your phone and hold it up to the QR link and it'll open it up. I put everything in this website called Wakelet. Um, my friend Alyssa Wern taught me about this tool, which I really love. It's kind of like a Pinterest board. So it will have the slides and then it has links to all of the resources, all the YouTube videos, all the activities and everything that is included in the slides. Now I did a webinar, a similar webinar for PRC Saltillo back in May. So I also put all, left all the links for activities and stuff for that webinar um, in that wakelet. So it's just like tons and tons of resources in there. So definitely click that link. I'm gonna share it again at the end if you miss it here. Um, I have links to my social media accounts if you want to connect that way. I have a YouTube channel where I share a bunch of teletherapy tips. I was like really heavy on it at the beginning of our school building closure and um, I'm gonna try to get some new stuff up there soon too. 
Uh, my Twitter and Instagram handles are Sarah Gregory SLP. I absolutely love connecting with other people that are passionate about AAC. So please connect and um, reach out there. I absolutely love Instagram, especially lately for like building that um, community of AAC practitioners, um, especially in this time where we're not seeing as many people or our colleagues, depending on your situation, if you're in person or not. It just has, um, during this closure and the time of COVID-19 has been a really nice way to connect with other people. Um, so reach out to me on there if you want. Our learner outcomes. So what hopefully we'll be able to do at the end of this session is list at least two activities that can be used both virtually and in person. So that's really gonna be the theme of all the activities because I'm sure um, as the group of the people watching this webinar, some of us will be virtual, some of us will be in person and that might um, even change throughout the school year. So we're gonna really look at things that are material that's flexible. We will look at the AAC prompt hierarchy and how that might look different in teletherapy. Um, we're gonna talk about strategies to support families and caregivers in setting up AAC teletherapy for success. And then we're also gonna look at strategies for providing aided language stimulation because we know how important that is. So my last webinar that I did in May, um, if you did watch it, this is gonna be all new information and new activities. If you didn't watch that one, that's sort of more of like a surface level overview of like I kind of just dumped every tool that I have been using. Um, and there's the like links to how to find everything. Um, and so if you just want like a ton of tools, go back and watch that one. This time, I'm gonna be sharing some new activities, but I'll look more in depth at how they work. Um, I'm actually gonna open them up and show sort of behind the scenes. We'll look at a video example, a few video examples of teletherapy, actually AAC teletherapy happening so that you can get kind of a better idea of how I happen to use the tools um, and just sort of how I try to make planning as easy as possible um, for myself. So I shared these slides in the, um, the webinar in May also, but I wanted to just revisit it because we know how important modeling and aided language stimulation is. And for me, this was kind of one of those pieces that I really needed to problem solve and um, figure like that. This is going to look different um, in a teletherapy environment. So for the purposes of this webinar, I will use the terms aided language stimulation, aided language input, or modeling kind of interchangeably because um, it's sort of the strategies to get a system displayed on your computer will serve any of those purposes. I use the terms aided language stimulation and aided language input to more um, mean I'm combining my verbal speech with AAC input. So I'm just talking with my student or client and also using the AAC system where I look at modeling as more um, kind of have a target word and I'm showing them how to use it for the purpose of them saying it back to me. Um, and also something that I think is really important to note, especially in this teletherapy platform, is that when we're using strategies to model AAC, it can help support the actual AAC learner, but it also might be a tool to support the um, adult or caregiver or whoever the support person that's present with them is. Because if we can support the people in their actual physical environment to get more comfortable with modeling and doing aided language stimulation, then we're really gonna make a much bigger impact than we can just with our 30 minute session. Um, so a lot of the strategies that I have might not work for one of my three-year-olds that I'm seeing, um, but it might really help their parent then model for them in the physical environment because one of the issues I have with modeling is that if I have a digital activity and I'm modeling on my computer screen, they also have their device in front of them. It's a lot of attention shifting. Um, so if the modeling can be happening right in their physical environment, then I think that's great. And I have a YouTube video, so you can see like any time I put this little YouTube icon, that'll be a link to a video. So the videos are all gonna be linked in the wakelet. But if you also just remember like, oh, there was a modeling video, where was that? You can open up the slides and those are all hyperlinked. So the two different options we have for displaying AAC systems are either dynamic display or static display. So this is just looking at one word um, represented statically here in this screenshot or a dynamic display video.
So difference between static and dynamic, um, and both I think are valuable and have their place in your teletherapy. So now we're gonna look really quick at static display options. This, um, we have a screenshot of just the home screen of LAMP, so you can always just do a screenshot on your iPad um, and put that into your activities. Then there's these smart charts. This is new from what I shared last time because um, I, in this one, these are from the AAC Language Lab. These charts are all for LAMP Words for Life, and there's like a hundred, for a hundred different words, there's these pathways, which I love, um, kind of the arrows pointing along and showing you where the motor pathway is, but also for any activities on the Language Lab, or almost all of them, there's a smart chart that goes along with it, so it's just a list of the target words and then the motor pathways. So I kind of forgot about these. I've been getting really into the Language Lab lately, and we're going to talk all about that, but I love this because the words are already picked out for you that go along with the activity. And what I've started to do is just take a little screenshot of these smart charts and insert those icon sequences into some activities. So that just, in terms of planning, um, that's been making it way easier for me. So also for, if you're gonna create static um, displays, like you can see down here at the bottom where I have the dice and then the green action man play icon, you can make these in the new voice pass software. You can of course use pass for that dynamic display. That's how I made that video of bite. So what you do is you go to write with icons where that arrow is pointing, you type in the word play, it gives you the icon sequence and you can cut and paste. Similarly, if you are using a Saltilla device or using touch chat, you can do this in chat editor by using the capture feature. Now for dynamic display options, just like I mentioned, pass and chat editor, you can bo use both of those um, for doing that dynamic display modeling, either live or if you wanna record it, I use um, the uh, Chrome extension Screencastify and we'll just record little clips of modeling that I insert into my activities. If you have an iPad with your AAC system, you can mirror your iPad. I still am using Lonely Screen, it's free, and it just has this periodic pop-up of like, do you wanna subscribe now? And I say, maybe later, and that's what I've been doing. Um, Reflector 3 is, I think, um, you won't get that pop-up. It's a $17 um, product, and I know a lot of people really like that. I haven't used it yet. I also have a YouTube video on um, mirroring your iPad, and I'm using Lonely Screen, but you could really um, use any, there's a bunch of different options for mirroring. So that's that's our overview on being able to show a system and I'll look a lot more on, especially embed how I embed icons into activities. I talk about that a lot and we'll look, um, look at that when we get into different activities. So now we're gonna talk about the AAC prompt hierarchy. So I'm sure we've all um, seen different prompt hierarchies. I should have stuck one in here. I love Kate Ahern's where she kind of has the umbrella that we're always providing aided language input and then goes through on what prompts to do first. Um, I like to do least to most prompting. Um, and so I always have those prompt hierarchies in the back of my mind when I'm doing my in-person therapy. Then when I started doing teletherapy, there's this added element of another person being there and your the computer screens in front of you. So I can't just like naturally flow through the prompt hierarchy like I might before. And I'm trying to strategize, when am I gonna ask the parent to do something versus I'm just showing it on the screen or, um, just kind of how does this look different when we have a computer screen between us and another person that may or may not be very familiar with the device. So I just created this, I put it on my Instagram and it was really nice. A lot of um, different people commented and gave feedback on um, if, you know, does this make sense or how they do things. Um, so look through those comments. Um, there was a lot of thoughtful discussion that went on there. So I'm gonna go through kind of each of these things which will sort of just set the stage for some conversation of what teletherapy looks like too. 
So as I mentioned, aided language input, um, we know how important that is and what an amazing teaching strategy it is. It, you know, using aided language input really takes the pressure, I think, off the AAC user that we're just modeling language, which is how everyone naturally learns languages that their mode of communication is modeled for them. So we'll, we talked about strategies for mirroring the AAC system, however you want to do that. My strategy is that I start my sessions, and you'll see this in the video examples, but I start my sessions giving a lot of aided language input. I put pull up the device on my screen and um, just kind of introduce, like today we're work, working on in and out, and I'll think of all these different ways that I can just kind of hammer as many times saying in and out as I possibly can so that I really show the motor plans at the beginning of the session. I think this helps the support person and it helps my student. Um, and then I might turn off the device and get into a digital activity. But again, I'm always gonna make that reminder is that sometimes these tricks are more for the other person to be able to learn strategies that they're carrying out the rest of the time. So I love using fun activities with embedded icons. So I like doing the embedded icons because I just, for one reason, I love anytime I can just have representation of AAC up there for my students. And also, I think that when you put the icons, even if it's not the full icon sequence, even if it's that first button, I found that this really helps um, the support person. I definitely have a hard time with that like live in the moment coaching you'll see um, in my example um, that it's I have a hard time saying okay to the parent or support person now do this now do this and then I'm telling the student okay look here and tell me to go so I can make the video go so when I embed icons I find that I can do a lot less of that kind of like coaching instruction in the moment um, while we're doing teletherapy and it's easier for them to say, oh, there's an image of like, so I'm gonna go and find that on the device and model like. Wait time is something I always, um, I'm always struggling with wait time. And I think sometimes via the computer, it almost can be harder. Like I, I keep saying I have some video examples. And so it's really interesting to go back and watch yourself. And I'm like, wow, I couldn't wait for even five seconds. Um, so I have some strategies for how we could like embed a timer into an activity to really just show this is what 20 seconds feels like. Um, Cause sometimes I feel like if there's too much wait time in the back of my mind, I feel like, okay, I'm not doing my job. I'm not getting my teletherapy done. Um, so just really having that reminder of even though we're not in person, we need to stop and really give time for the student to wait wait time for them to respond and this might also mean reminding the other person that's with them that um to wait as well so i think going over this prompt hierarchy or whatever it is you choose to use before you start teletherapy and being really clear with the support person of when you want them to give a prompt maybe you want them to wait until you signal them or maybe you just want to establish let's agree to wait 15 seconds or 20 seconds and also that expectant look goes a long way, and I think that's so much easier to do in person, but we can still do it behind the computer screen and try to be really animated, um, like, okay, uh, what what do you want? What is your choice? Um, and sort of try to do some silly things to invite them to communicate without going right away to another prompt. Um, Indirect verbal cues, I love asking open-ended questions. I love making comments, especially if you're modeling, because um, it's modeling comments, a really fun um, language strat uh, communication function, and also um, just commenting like, yeah, isn't this gross? Isn't this weird? What do you think um, can be a nice way, then provide more wait time, it can be a nice way to invite them um, to jump in on the session. Oh, and also I try to go back to words that I targeted at the beginning of the session. So say I'm really focusing on in and out, doesn't mean that's gonna be the only words I'm working on, but that's really what I'm gonna focus on. So I might say, oh, do you want me to put it in and say one of the words that I modeled a ton in the beginning. So it might help them um, get to it more successfully. So now um, I stuck this in here, I think it's number five of the communication partner modeling on the device. This could really happen anywhere. And you might decide, 
um, that you want the communication partner to be modeling the whole time and just get as much aided language stimulation as you can in the session, or you might really want to get more wait time and see what the AAC learner is saying on their own. Um, so that's going to be up to you, but asking them to model on the actual device, I think, because they're using that to communicate back to you. So I think sometimes it can be hard if I'm modeling on the computer and then I'm asking them, shift your focus down to your device. Now shift your focus back up to me to see whatever activity I'm doing. I think it's sometimes easier to just do it all on their physical device if that's possible. Now, I've definitely had... Um, many instances where I feel like my teletherapy is bombing, like, okay, the kid got up and walked away, um, they're really not into this, I spent all night making this activity and they don't even like it. Um, so I'm really trying to, when things aren't going well, when I'm not getting that engagement, I feel like for me in person, it was so much more natural to think on my feet, to quickly shift activities, to grab something else off the shelf that I know they like, um, and it's much harder for me to do in teletherapy, but I really am looking at myself and making a change on my end. One of the bit, the first things I try is do less. So if I, even if I'm modeling and they're not really interested, one of my students that I'm working with this summer is three years old and we're doing so great now, but at the beginning of our time working together, it could be hard to keep his engagement. So the first thing I would go to was just close out the activity. If I was holding something up, I would just put it down and just kind of see what he would go to in his own environment. Um, and that has really worked well for us to work more on what's in his own physical environment. I think sometimes in teletherapy, at first I felt like I had to like be pulling out all of these digital activities when really just because we're on a computer doesn't mean we need to be using um, apps and digital activities. So I think decreasing the um, visual input is a change that I think has really worked or maybe find something that's more motivating, that's more targeted towards their interests um, that I'm always, if things aren't going well, I'm thinking, what can I do? Um, what can I change to make this more successful? So that is the end of our prompt hierarchy. And in my last webinar in May, I shared my favorite things. So all my favorite digital activities. And so now here are some new favorite things that I found. So, especially when first school first closed, I'm sure we all were feeling super overwhelmed. And I felt like I had really limited time, really limited energy. Um, everybody's really, there's so many stress, stresses right now. Um, we don't have tons of extra money to be buying all these new tools or buying new subscriptions. Um, and I just felt super overwhelmed thinking, like, I don't want to buy all these boom cards to then never use them again, right? So I focused my time and energy on learning and buying tools that can both be used in person and virtually. And really, most things can. Um, any of the activities I've made in slides, um, Boom cards can be opened on your computer or on your iPad. In person, I used my iPad all the time. And so now I just feel like I have all of these resources or um, sort of the knowledge to make a bunch of different activities just in slides or things like that that I can use with my iPad. Um, also, if you're in person, using just an iPad is easier to sanitize than a bunch of physical materials. So I really like that I have learned all of these new digital tools that are flexible. So the first thing we're gonna look at is this virtual field trip. So a lot of people I have seen do these. Um, and I made this one at the end of the school year because one of my specific students loves going to the children's garden in our community and it had been shut down um, since March. So I made this as sort of like our end of the year send off. Um, and so let's look at move it and present and look at how it works. So I've seen people do these for Disneyland, for the San Diego Zoo. Um, there's a lot of fun stuff out there. I know um, Kristen Powell, whose Instagram is the Daily Dose of Speech. She, I think she has it in her story highlights. She did a zoo one, um, some really fun ones. So I kind of took inspiration from that. This is the map of our children's garden. And so then I could ask the students um, where they want to go. And I, also a lot of my activities are things that I can use live 
in teletherapy with my students, or I might just send this slide deck home to the family because um, there's tons of tons of activities in here. So it just could be something fun that they could do for carryover. So we'll click on the X and it will link to, um, this is the sand pit, this is a picture of the children's garden. And so my target word here, I just inserted the icon sequence for build because we're gonna build a sand castle and then there's a link to an activity. So I'm picturing that this is a nice support for if I'm not there and the parent's just doing it, they can say, all right, we're going to use the word build. I go to the house, then the hammer, so we can practice that a couple of times. And then a lot of the activities that I got were from PBS Kids. So this is Daniel Tiger building a sandcastle. And then when that's all done, go home and we're back to the map so we can pick something else. Um, and I could also be clicking these links and um, doing this in like live in teletherapy as well. So here, this is a story walk that's in our children's garden. And so I linked it to a YouTube video. I think this is my friend, Allison Rotolo. Her Instagram is the speechy Frenchie. And she has like, you can see this video has lamp symbols built in. So anytime we can build in icons, I love that. Yep, there's Allison. So follow her too. And then again, we just click the home button and go home. Um, here is the entrance to the children's garden and this is a youtube video from mr clay that talks about wearing a mask and it has aac icons in it I'm trying to think of some of the other fun things uh again pbs kids so these are just some activities i love to organize things in slides but i'm not like oh i wanted to do that curious george activity about planting flowers um it's just all organized so i can pull up this slide deck and I'm ready to go for my teletherapy. So I'm not sure if I linked this one because I felt like it was so specific to our town, but if anybody wants this, I can stick this in the wakelet. I'm pretty sure everything else is in the wakelet. So that's our virtual field trip. Now we have, um, I shared some things about from lesson picks the last time as well. So this is just another way I use lesson picks and I got this idea from Beth Poss. So their YouTube channel has tons, tons of good ideas on how to use the website. Um, I don't, haven't really bought, spent a lot of money on buying materials. I have my subscription to Lesson Picks, a subscription to the Language Lab, and I feel like um, I just get so much from both of those sites not sponsored by either of them. This is truly <laughs> the resources that I love. Um, I don't even make things on lesson picks. I did make this one, I guess, in slides, but I love to just search and get things that other people have made. They have lamp icons. Um, so I, I love that. And we're going to go out of present and I'll show you how this is made. So my example of teletherapy that I'm showing at the end is with my daughter. And so I picked her current favorite things. So this little character, Naughty, is a new cartoon on Netflix and he's a detective. So he uses his magnifying glass. So I used that character to try to motivate her in our teletherapy session. So Beth Poss, I'm pretty sure it was Beth, did this one where you have this magnifying glass and you put that gray circle in so you can move it around and it just really nicely highlights that icon. So I don't know, I don't think I have time to really explain how I made this, but I think there's a YouTube video um, that I took this magnifying glass is from Lesson Picks. You group a circle and then you, when you go to order, you say send to back, back, order, order. Um, of course I'm not finding it, but you would say send to back so that the icons are in the front of your slide. So when you move the magnifying glass around, the icon will be in the front and the um, gray will just kind of highlight it. So this is super simple. Um, I was, you can see in the example I was saying to my daughter, like, oh, Naughty's trying to find the words that you practice. He has a problem to solve, help him get clues. And we moved this around. I kind of thought like, oh, I don't know if this is good. I didn't use it with anybody before my daughter. Um, and my husband was the one who was supporting her in our AAC session. And he said this was his favorite activity because it was really simple. It was what we did at the end to just review our target words. And it was what he said it was a lot clearer to just see that one icon and it was easier for him um, to see what the target was based um, rather than the other things that I was doing. So 
simple activity, but this ended up being the favorite. So um, next we're going to look at these modeling videos from Christopher Jensen's YouTube channel. So I'm gonna go into that slide deck. So Christopher Jensen has a YouTube channel where he has like 1 million videos of um, core words and they're like 20 second clips and we'll watch one. So he just models the word, acts it out, models the word. Nice little formula. And so I wanted to organize these. Specifically, my idea here was that this would be an activity that I would send home, not necessarily do in live teletherapy, but you could certainly do either. I drew a little shape around each of the words that I was using, and then I linked it to the slide in the presentation that has that specific video. Um, and I also like how this is set up with the Lampwords for Life home screen so that you're still getting that beginning part of the motor plan um, when you're clicking and modeling for kids. So let's do turn. And then we could say, oh, do you want to do more? Click the more and it'll take you right back to the home screen. So when I started to make this activity, I was thinking that he had like 10 YouTube videos. And I was like, oh, this will take me a little while. Um, but there, I put 40 something in here and he has even more. So this um, slide deck is linked in the Wakelet. So you can take it. Um, it'll force a copy. So if you want to edit anything, you can go in and add more words if you want. There's multiple videos for each, for some of the words. Um, so this is, there's a lot in here. Um, I feel like it's simple and like a nice, nice way to target some generalization of skills. Here is one of my favorite tricks of how to make an activity in slides that I'm definitely using this in my live teletherapy. And then again, I will also send this home um, for that asynchronous or not live teaching piece. Um, I have a video on how to make an activity. It's with a book. Um, and so it's the same, I'm doing the same steps, but it's just a YouTube video of a book rather than a video. So let's look at this one. So I was sharing this with some uh, another group of SLPs, so I put some directions in here. And um, so it's a YouTube video of this Pixar short. And what I did was I said insert and video, and then you can go to YouTube and search for it, or you can just paste the actual link from YouTube. When you click on the video and you go to format options, you can see that for the playback, I started it at zero seconds and I stopped it at 52 seconds. So this will be a 52 second clip and then there's an opportunity for some modeling. Then this next one, when I formatted it, I started it at 52 seconds and went to 137, which is where I decided to cut it off so that, um, videos can be really motivating for kids. If I open up a video on YouTube, then I'm closing it out, trying to model. I like this because it takes some work up front, but then when you're actually live with somebody, um, you can, it just, for me, it makes it a lot more simple and streamlined. So we'll take a look at what this looks like. We'll put this one in present. Um, if there's anything in slides where you're moving things around like that magnifying glass, I take it out of present. Um, but for videos like this, I will put it in present. And play a little clip of the video. So then when that clip ends, here, I just did a screenshot of the home screen of um, WordPower. I think this is 60 basic. So then here's my other trick. 
you can see this little subtle countdown happening in the corner. So that is a timer that this is sort of my strategy for not for my student, but this is to help myself and the support person remember to give that 20 seconds of wait time. Because even though in the back of my mind, I know 20 seconds actually sitting there and forcing yourself to feel the 20 seconds and it feels longer than you think sometimes. So I put this really small in the corner because I don't want this to be like a distraction or like um, you better answer in 20 seconds to my student or anything. I wouldn't even mention it to them. I would just let the caregiver know um, I'm going to put this timer in here to kind of help us practice. And even if you did it, the timer for a couple of the slides and then took it out for the rest of them, um, I think that would be fine. So the same thing I went to insert and I went to YouTube and typed in 20 second timer. None of the timers, they counted down 20 seconds and then give you like rest time. So again, I went to formatting, I think, and just made this one 20 seconds. Um, so I ended it right at 20 seconds so that there wasn't like a rest time. And you can see I just shrunk it down. You could even shrink it down smaller. Um, and the other thing I did here in the format options, which you could do this with the video as well, is that I said auto play when presenting so that it just would start to count down. So I took a screenshot here of the, because the question is, how do the birds feel? And then I took a picture of the page that has feelings. So then I'm gonna ask after that next clip, I just skipped that one, what happened? And the birds fall down. So I put a little highlight on go down and I typed the question at the top because sometimes I make these things and then a week later I go to use it and I'm like, what was I really trying to target there? Or now I have to think of a question for myself. Anything I can do beforehand to make things easier on myself, um, I'm, I'm gonna go for it. So. Um, these are also movable, but not when you're in present. So um, you could take it out of present and say, oh, they went down. Or you could say, did they go down or did they go up? You also, and sometimes I will do this, just insert a video um, of you saying go down on the device. So if you have an iPad, you could do... Um, what's it called, how you record your screen on the iPad. Um, I can't remember what you call it. But anyways, I do that a lot. And then I save that video to my Google Drive. And then you can just insert it here. Um, when I made this, I just went for the easier screenshot. And then you can see there's another what happened, um, the Big Bird Falls. So I highlighted fall. Um, and I like this too, because it's just a highlight around the word of what happened. But um, the student could then go and say anything. Um, and then did you like it? So I opened up the chat page and did a screenshot of that. So did you like it? Yes or no? I thought it was funny. Did you think it was funny? Um, or no way. You can also use your mouse to highlight some different words there. So now we're going to look at Edpuzzle. I want to make sure I'm good on time. So Edpuzzle is a website this is free um so everything i shared so far is free and all those activities that i shared in slides you can take and make a copy of from the weeklet so rachel madel has been talking about ed puzzle um since before i was doing teletherapy and i was like oh that sounds cool but i also sometimes i just can't picture learning a new tool um and i think that's okay so if anything i'm sharing you're like this is too much i'm just give yourself permission to not do it, not explore it, but keep it in the back of your mind. Remember where the wakelet is if you wanna go back and check it out because I hadn't done Edpuzzle until this summer, but I was kind of glad because now I have like a new fresh activity to spice things up. Um, so whenever you get to learning something new, that's great. Rachel has a short, simple YouTube video. I Honestly, I watched it and I was like, oh, all I had to do was just watch this video and now I feel confident to go in there and start using Edpuzzle. Um, but anyways, we can only do one thing at a time and handle what we can handle, right? So what you do in Edpuzzle, and just go watch Rachel's video, but essentially you will find a YouTube video and put it into the website 
and then you can stop it. So it's kind of like what I just did with that Pixar short where you're stopping and then giving opportunities for modeling or showing their the student symbols. All of these teardrops here are just places where I cut the video. And so on the when it, the teardrop happens, it will stop and you can ask a question. So you could ask a multiple choice question. Um, and there, you could ask an open-ended question and students can type in. So I know Rachel uses these a lot. She'll create them for like a student's favorite thing. So this one I created for my daughter's um, example teletherapy session. She loves this show Octonauts. So that's what I chose. In the notes section, so like I said, you can do ask a multiple choice question, open-ended, or just do a note. You can insert pictures. So I did insert um, the icons. And Rachel's joking and saying, like, I'm too lazy to do that. So she just would type in the word. So if you're sending this to the family, then they could easily look at the word and know that that's what they're supposed to model. And you just let them know when the video stops, whatever word it is, model that on the device and maybe try to prompt your child to say it. Um, I put in the icons just for sort of this example, or I've made a couple that I've sent to other people that needed an activity. So I put in the icons to make it a little, a little fancier. Um, but you could easily do it with or without the icons. If you have um, a client who's a reader, then you could definitely just type in. It would be super, super fast to do this if you're just typing in. Putting in the icons is a little bit annoying because you have to save it to your computer um, and then get it out of your drive. So you can see this is sort of how I made the note. And then when it's all done, you can assign it to a student. Um, I go to public links and copy the link and we'll just send the link um, home. And then that's another way. I really like also planning activities that are easy to be shared home for just that carryover piece, um, which is something you can easily do with Edpuzzle. Okay, wanna make sure I'm good on time still. Next, we're gonna talk about the AAC Language Lab. Lots and lots of stuff from the Language Lab. So the Language Lab is a subscription. It's $19, I think, for the year. Um, for me, it's so worth it. This the Language Lab was something that I was using a little bit at the beginning of doing starting teletherapy in March. And now I've really just kind of dove into it and like gotten so much stuff. And in terms of prep, no prep, like so little prep is needed, um, which is something that I love about this website. So as I said, not um, spawn, being paid to sponsor the, or being sponsored by the Language Lab at all, but I love it. And most of the things I'm gonna show you are free. So even if you don't have a subscription, there's a lot of different activities on Language Lab. So definitely check that out um, and don't let that stop you from checking it out. So I was looking for some fresh ideas at the beginning of the summer. I felt like I have exhausted um, every idea that I had. So I got Edpuzzle and I asked my PRC Saltillo Saltillo consultant Emily for some ideas. Um, I was like, I haven't really gotten into the language lab. Do you have any quick tips of like, what should I do to just get started to get some fresh ideas? So she said, of course, I know this, there's all these books on the language lab, which I've always just printed out and used them in in-person um, therapy, but they're so great. They target core words. That's not it. That's not it. I don't think I opened this one. Um, and they're PDFs, so you can just open them and there we go. In our teletherapy session, we are home. There's instructions on exactly how to use it. Um, school is closed. We cannot go. It looks like we have to stay home. So timely, depending on what your student situations are. Um, and this is just, it's a nice book. You know it's going to be core word focused. And then in terms of planning, you don't even have to read the book beforehand and plan out your core words because, is this the smart chart, I think? This is the smart chart. Sorry, it's not clicking. That will have the target words planned out for you. So if you're really just kind of helping the in-person support get to the words, 
you could even just click back and forth between the book and then, oh, let's look at the smart chart. Is it bad that we have to stay home or whatever it is that you want to target? Or what I did, because any opportunity I get to put something into Google Slides, I'm going to take it. So look at this. I did a little, I just did this one page as an example here, but um, I thought this was a great idea of this screenshot is just from the smart chart. So I'm not even opening up chat editor and get like doing that work to get the icon sequences. Um, there's the page, Jane Odom has just picked out your core words and she's got the icon sequence. And so this is just two screenshots in a Google slide. Um, and so I really like this. And again, picture sending this home um, to family or caregiver who might not be as familiar with the device. And then it's really simple. Just say, read the book and at the end of each page, model the word that's there. So super easy, low prep activity. Now we are going to look at Jamboard. So this is an activity from the language lab. A lot of them, like I said, how I've typically used language lab is printing out activities and physically using them with my student. But now with all of these new tech tools I have, I can easily take a PDF that I would have in the past printed out and I can turn it into a digital activity without myself like creating this whole bingo game because we wanna be um, smart with our time. So this is like the combination of all my favorite things, right? It's an activity from Language Lab. It was created on Lesson Picks and I put it into Jamboard. Jamboard is one of my favorite things. Um, so actions in Jamboard. Jamboard is a Google product. It is a very simple interactive whiteboard, but you can also insert pictures into it. So you have a pen feature, um, a race, the mouse will let you drag things around. You can write post-its, which is how I did the discard pile. And I also inserted the image. So I just took the PDF from Language Lab and screenshot each of the individual cards and I screenshot all of the bingo boards. So here's sort of, that might be my page and then I might tell my student, you go to page two. If it's a group, then you're on page three and you're on page four and there's four different bingo games. What I like about this little trick for Google products, because we use Google Meet in my district, so we don't have the option to give screen control to students, which for me I think is okay. Um, I've been perfectly fine not adding that as something else to juggle, but you can share a Jamboard just like you can share a Google Doc and make it collaborative. So instead of you sharing your screen, you can um, share the Jamboard and tell each student to get on their specific page and then they can be using the pen to cross out the words that they get. So what I would do is go to my mouse so I can move the cards and say, okay, the first word is eat, find it on your device or cross it out or whatever. And here's just a stack of the cards um, to do that. This bingo activity is also in the wakelet so that it's, and it will force you to make a copy so you won't mess it up for anybody else. Um, so that's available if you want it. And you could also just share your screen and be going over it with your student and um, kind of crossing out, modeling, whatever you want to do there. So that is the idea for Jamboard. And we're going to keep talking more about Language Lab. All of this stuff is definitely free. I double checked it today. So I'm like 99% sure that all of these next activities are free because Jane Odom has created a summer camp of activities, of AAC activities that are on the Language Lab. So this super, super awesome. I'm really glad to discover this um, resource on the Language Lab YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel is linked or you could just search it on YouTube. She has these short, you can see this video is just like four minutes. So what she does is she has her device where she's modeling different words and walking you through how you could use each of like these five activities. So I think there's maybe six weeks of summer camp right now that she's done each week has like a literacy activity, a STEM activity, a book, a bunch of different things. And she'll show you how to use it here. So one thing you could do is send the 
video home um, or to the support person or to your AAC user that you're working with. And this could just give um, the parents or whoever's supporting some ideas on how to use these activities. And then also maybe print the things out and send them home. I also made everything digital so that if I wanted to do it live in my teletherapy, I could. The video is only four minutes. So I also thought this could be kind of cool prep for whoever the support person is. Um, of just them knowing what to expect really quick and seeing some ideas of language that they could model before I go live with the student and start doing the activities. So again, this is just me loving to put things in Google Slides. You do not have to do this, although it didn't take very long. Um, so this is what we're gonna see for camp. Also, I want to note that just because this is a summer camp theme doesn't mean that you can't use it not in summer, right? So I'm definitely going to be using these plans and using these activities at the start of school. I'm probably going to start again right at week one and go through and then my AAC therapy is going to be prepped for like the first two months of school, right? So the plan, here it is, week five. So you can see that she has each of her activities laid out. So I just took these and again, because I mean, this is what I like, I put them all into Google Slides. Um, so I wanted to change some things too. So she has this book tomorrow, I'll Be Brave. And because I'm picturing doing this in teletherapy, I um, put the YouTube video of reading this book. So in case my student doesn't have the book, um, that's linked there. There's this catapult activity that this is just the directions from the language lab. Now you saw in this video, she has printed out this inside out feeling scheme. So what I did, you could do this in Jamboard as well. I just did this example in slides, but it's the same way I made the Jamboard one, which was pretty easy. Screenshots of the cards for the board game. And then I just chose characters that could go um, along and play the game. So this could be something that you're using, like something physical in front of the student. It could be something where you're not even there and they're just doing it with their friends or family. Um, if you're doing it in teletherapy, I just did this screenshot of the feelings page on um, touch chat. And this again is just a little icon that you can move around um, for how does the person feel so that I would just be in the same slide deck and I could transfer between the game and then modeling. For me, that's a lot easier than mirroring my iPad, shutting down my iPad, going back to the game, right? So that's just kind of how I'm thinking of it. Then we have, I've linked um, this writing activity where this is really awesome because you can just click, you can ask, um, you can pull this up, screen share it, and then ask your student, okay, what's the date? Um, what's your dream? How are you gonna do it? Who are you gonna do it with? And you can just type right in all of these. So it's something you could print, send home, you could email at home and they could do it without you, or you could do it together in live teletherapy. So that is great. Next, scream for words. Okay, I didn't put a link, but this, oh no, it is the Jamboard. So this is just a PDF that I, again, screenshot, um, cropped it and put it into a Jamboard so that for me, this is just easier to make this digital. Um, again, print it out, send it home is one option, or you can have your student be reading words and then moving it to kind of make the ice cream. You can color like whatever. That's not a great one for coloring. I forgot when I did the paint. Um, you can color your ice cream. Let's make it strawberry ice cream. You can, this is Jamboard, share it so that your student is the one that's getting to color and manipulate it. Then my other tip for Jamboard is that you can erase, but after I use one really quick before I shut it out, I just do the back button so that it resets and it's all there nicely for me. Um, so where are we? So that is, that's camp. Make sure that I'm good on time. I'm like so worried about the time because normally I present for one hour and this one is an hour and a half. And so for some reason, that's just like too much for me to be able to get the timing right. So 
I love this, what Jane Odom has done. I love that there's YouTube videos. Like there's just so much done for you because you don't have to do this at all. If you do wanna do this, um, open up my slides and just copy and paste the app, like click, right click on the slide in this slide deck. I didn't link this separately, but you can easily copy it, switch out the activities, um, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, I like how this is organized. I could then in my therapy session say, what do you wanna do first? Do you wanna do the book first or do you wanna build the catapult first? Um, and so, so again, this is just, that's me loving to organize in Google Slides. So now, I mentioned this before, but no tech activities was something that I kind of had to bring myself around to because at first I'm like, okay, I saw an example of teletherapy on Instagram and they had boom cards and they had modeling and they had dual monitors and they were mirroring an iPad and this is what teletherapy looks like, right? But then, no, first of all, you don't have to do that. If that's how you're doing things, then awesome. I admire that. Also, you can do fun things with physical activity. So I have some examples here um, that are just you like holding things up, reading a book that you're holding. Um, and that can be really fun and engaging for your clients. Uh, like I said, one of my students this summer really likes, um, engages with when I'm holding up something physical, but also really what our breakthrough was, was when his mom got the idea to pick out a game that he could put in front of him in front of the computer screen and he could just play and tell me about it. Um, so like that magnetic farm, I think it's Melissa and Doug. So it's just like a magnet background and it has like horses and sheep and all these different farm animals was the first thing she did. So I could say, oh, where are you gonna put the cow? And he could tell me about that. And that was really awesome. So that's how we're starting our sessions a lot. Then I know I mentioned this before, um, and I can't remember who made this point to me, but um, how kids love to watch those random YouTube videos of people playing with toys, which, um, but you can be a YouTube star. So think of those videos and what, whatever reason why that engages kids and um, pull out some of that stuff into your own therapy. So some things that I have done, um, I Maggie Judson just posted on Instagram. She's the bookish at the bookish SLP about how she steals her kids toys for teletherapy and that's what I do so all of these things are just from my kids so I can't see my webcam so normally I like to see myself so I can see how things are coming across but I just have this bus and this is really for in and out and um, I happen to just have a bunch of like little characters my kids love these things so if you know your student likes Elmo oh look Elmo's going into the bus should he be the driver? Should he sit in the back? Does he come out of the back? Um, my kids are obsessed with Octonauts, so I'm of course gonna try to find my students' interests and um, get the characters that they like. They can go in the bus. I also am gonna demonstrate this one in the video example, but this Critter Clinic that I know is a very popular SLP toy, has little keys and you can just stick Oh, I think I have Peppa Pig in here. So, oh, look, Peppa comes out. Um, and so anything like that is an idea. I haven't done this, but I've heard people saying like Easter eggs. So anything that you can open, kids really love. I also, I love to pull up books on YouTube, but also you can put books kind of up to, I'm not gonna be able to do it well now because I can't see myself, but you can put books up to the screen and do it that way, especially if you're not modeling or maybe you are pulling up your system to model, but if you're not modeling, then your students can be able to see it a little bit bigger. But like this book by Jenny Bajoram is not something that you're gonna find on Epic, right? Um, but I have a physical copy. So I'll just hold it up like that. You could use a document camera, but just to keep it simple, um, you could go through and read the book. Kids also, I found through teletherapy and in person, really love books that open. So I have this, um, even firefighters go to the potty, this is my kid's book, um, and it opens up and like kids just think that's so silly, right? Um, so you can open it up and see that. I did my bus, I have my characters. Um, I also, you can model, you can do no tech modeling, right? So I'm gonna show a picture of this so you can see it a little better. I took a post-it and just cut out a shape and then I can move this around 
and kind of give an example on my board, my Lamp Words for Life board, of which, where the target is. So this I use in my example too. I really like this one where a lot of the words are hidden. I think that's easier to follow. Again, Maggie Judson. Look at this little, this is great teletherapy or not. Um, especially if somebody commented, oh, for kids that love Legos. Um, I was like, my kids have that Lego kit. So I went really quick and just built this. And then this could be another way that you're highlighting things. You could also build with Legos. I did uh, Mr. Potato Head, which I was like, this was gonna be boring, right? For my student to watch this, they loved it. We're saying put on, put on. So that was great. Those are my no tech things that I just grabbed from my own playroom. Um, so I think we all, whether or not you have kids toys in your house, probably have stuff from our office that we're used to using in person. And I really found it comforting for my students that um, when we went so quickly to um, teletherapy that it was nice for them to see things that we had um, been doing in person. Um, and so anything that you know they like, especially if you can find the characters that they like, I have this finger puppet. So you can do all these like fun things that you used to do for modeling in person and you can also do them for teletherapy. And I'll show you more in my example that sometimes I like to model in my physical space so that I can just use my computer for sharing an activity because although I love when you have a digital activity and modeling up at the same time, if your student's on a phone or an iPad, that can be hard, I think, to follow. Um, when I do those videos, I pre-record them so that I'm not also worrying about my student's engagement, that if I'm live with a student, I want to have like not so much going on that I'm not able to focus on them and what they're doing and how they're responding to my activities. Because definitely if I try to do too much new tech, I'm not able to focus on the engagement with my students. Okay, now we're getting, because I've been talking about the example of teletherapy. So something that with anything in life, right? setting the scene and being prepared. So I'm gonna show you some videos and kind of go through some things in this example where my daughter is using Lamp Words for Life on an iPad and my husband is acting as her support person. So this is how I did it for the video example, which I recognize is not what real teletherapy looks like with an AAC user. I was kind of brainstorming how I was going, I really wanted to show a video example because I think that's super helpful. And I hope that this is still helpful for everyone. Um, this was just sort of, I used my daughter because it was easy for me to coordinate um, timing and stuff like that. In terms of getting consent for being on a webinar that's going on YouTube, it was between her and I, and that was easy for me to gain consent. Um, so I'm brainstorming some ideas of how I can easily do that in the future with real clients and real AAC users, because I do want to say part of me is uncomfortable with this idea of like simulating a disability, um, which it's, I really didn't mean for it to intend for it to be like that. And as I said about people reaching out to me, I'm totally interested to hear what other people's take take is on that because my goal was just to give an example of how I specifically am using activities and how I'm modeling. So I hope that there's definitely some something helpful out of it. And I also would recommend if you have an opportunity to um, record yourself doing teletherapy, it's so much easier to record on a screen than it is like physically in your office. And there was, I just did this in one take because um, I was like, I'm if I try to be a perfectionist and get like my best teletherapy out there, we're gonna be here all day. So this is just really our first take. Uh, and me doing my best, uh, but there's definitely things that I can critique, but that was just interesting. Like I said, wow, I didn't give enough wait time. I didn't respond to her nonverbal communication. So it's fun to be able to see um, things like that if you are able to record yourself. So let's get to this picture is how I set up because I wanted to be able to see what she was actually doing on the device. And you can log in the iPad to Zoom, which I considered, but I wanted to be able to see her hands. I wanted to see um, her dad's hands of who was doing what. And so I have, this is just from my kitchen because I also wanted to, I've been kind of brainstorming different ways that we can set up being able to see, um, having that second camera to be able to see the AAC device. 
you know, don't want it to be like you have to buy a document camera or you have to buy one of those gooseneck things for your phone, which are options and um, those phone holders are pretty inexpensive on Amazon, but this is something we had in our cabinet that you stack dishes on, but because it has these little holes, um, we put the phone on there and the phone camera was able to go through. I also was really thinking about how I could set it up. So I put the computer up higher so that this isn't blocking her view of the computer screen. I've seen really nice ones where people are doing it on the side, um, but I felt like for her shifting attention, it would be easier if it was right in front of her. So I set this up for them because this is my own house, right? But if you're helping um, somebody else set it up, this is, I promise, my next YouTube video that I'm gonna make. I talked about this with Christine Bodden who moderates AAC for the SLP um, Facebook group. And we thought that it would be really great to have just a video to give parents some examples of how they can set this up at home um, because that's just kind of like another step of coaching. So to prepare for the session, I would definitely go over whatever you wanna do for prompt hierarchy, which I'll be honest, I did not do that for this session. And if I had, um, you know, who knows? So I think telling the parent when you want them to step in and model, if you want them to wait for you, how you're gonna set up this camera, which if I make a YouTube video, it'll be really easy to just send that home to family. So I'm hoping next week I will do that um, for the second camera because I thought that was pretty helpful. Um, also, be sure to know what device that your student or client is on, because like I said, if they're on something small, you're really not going to be able to share a lot. Um, one of my students in the spring was accessing therapy on a phone, so I really wasn't sharing anything digital with him. We were just like having conversations, using our physical materials and things like that, and a lot of him playing and me trying to interact with his world through the phone. Um, so it's important to know, you can see this is sort of the shot of what they were seeing on their end. So how I set up my um, teletherapy session is that this is kind of the formula that I like to use. So I start, like I said, it's a lot for me to be modeling and doing a digital activity. So I will start and I'll set the scene with, you can see over here where it says, hello, I am modeling. That's what the, um, the student is seeing really big. I'm gonna model and set the scene for those words that I'm gonna target. I'm targeting in, out, stop, um, can't remember everything. So I'm doing dynamic display and then I'm doing a physical activity. You'll see that in the video. After that sort of intro, then I'll go to my static display strategies and pull up one of my fun digital activities because I knew she wanted to watch Octonauts and things like that. So I'm kind of picking either or. I'm starting with the dynamic display because I think that really is what's best to give your student um, that the support of the aided language input um, and then switching it over to again, I feel like these static display, those screenshots, that's more for the dad to be seeing where things are. I used this, so I kind of did a lot. You'll see, I have those icons, I have this coming up, so it might be too much, um, but I was like excited because I just thought of this post activity or strategy, and so I wanted to use it. So now, yes, now we're at the video. So it's I have like three three-minute clips, so this one's gonna be about three minutes and if I can remember I'm gonna do it share our first video here I'm just gonna record it within zoom I guess um okay. all right hi Raya I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can see my words too. Okay. Hello. Hi. Did you see how I said hello? Hello. Yes. Oh, yes, you saw. Can you say hello too? Hello. <laughs> Can you say it on your talker? Hello. Hmm, it looks like you went to eat. Are you thinking about food? 
Yes. Yes, you are? Oh, I like how you're saying yes and no. So I'm going to say hi one more time. It's this firework one right here. John, if you see it, you can show her on hers. You want to do that? Say hello. Oh, look, look. Let that one find it. Hello. Hello, Hello. Maya. Hi. Look at what toy I have for us. <laughs> cool, right? So watch my screen. If you want to say something, you can say something. Printer. Printer? Huh. Okay, Raya, look, we're going to do this. I have my keys, and we're going to work on the words in and out. If you watch my screen, I'll show you. In is right here. There's some toys yeah. in here. Yeah. See how I'm saying that? Right here. The toys yeah. are in the house, and we want to take them out. Happen. Happen. What's going to happen? Ooh, good word. I'm opening it, opening it. I take it. Vantage. Vantage is old yeah. school. You have an iPad. Bounce. Don't take it out. Should I leave it in or should I take it? Out. Oh, no. It looks, I can see with your hand, it looks like you want it out. Can you tell me on your talker? Out? No. Out. Nice! Your dad helped show you where it was. Out! Look, Raya! It's a car. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom, vroom. It's a skinny car. Look, it is a skinny little truck. So funny. Do you want to do more? Look, we could do more. Okay, so that is our first look. Oh, I'm not no, no. Okay, so here's a quick little picture of what that post-it thing looks like, because I'm going to use that in the next video. All right. And, all right, we're ready for the next one. I guess I didn't really put too much in between there, so I'm going to go mute myself again and show the next clip of the next activity. So we have Octonauts, we have a field trip of the children's garden, we haven't been there in a while, and then I have a game with Naughty. So we could do, do you want to start with Octonauts? Do you want to do Octonauts first? Yes, okay. So, yes. Yes, I want to do Octonauts first. Yes. Yes, nice. Okay. Let me open it up. It's going to be an Octonauts video. The Octonauts and the Serpent Snails. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to ask you, where are the octonauts? Are they in the octopod? Where are they? Oh, 
in the gut. Oh, they're going through the water. In. Nice, they're in the gut. Spending a day on the beach was a great The Vegemites. Okay, do you see this picture on the screen? Where is the guck now? Did it go out? Where did the guck go? Maybe. Come on, Quasi. Why don't we ride the next wave back to the beach? Hi, matey. <laughs> oh, look at what they do on their surfboards. They said, ready? Set, let's go. 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 John, if you can show her once, then maybe she'll do it after. It's that green frog right in the middle. Go. Okay. Go. All right, Dashie, go! See you back on the beach. Keep us afloat. Wow, I've never met a surfing snail before. That's okay, Junior. We've never met a surfing snail. Yes. <gasps> I just like surfboards. Okay, so they were in the water, and now they are we've been practicing this one. They came You can say something different if you have a different idea. What do you want to say, Rye? Cool. I missed it. What did you say? Cool? Cool. Pool? Does it remind you of a pool because they're surfing? Yeah, nice thought. Okay, let's see what they're going to do next with those sea snails. Fascinating. Radical. All well and good when the water. This is pretty far out. I know. Right, this is far out. No, I mean, pretty far out. Pretty awesome. Follow us. Ooh, look at her go. Go, Dashy.
Kara, it's Heather. We may need to have you go in and reconnect your microphone. So, Adi is trying to solve a problem. He has his magnifying glass and he is looking for the missing words. Can you help him find them? No. I'm going to help Naughty and you tell me what you see. Oh, look what he found. What word did Naughty find? Go. Did you say go? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Go. All right, Naughty, let's look around. I'm finding some clues for some other words. Oh, what did you find, Naughty? What word? Do you remember we said that one a lot when we were watching Octonauts? In. Nice job, in. Oh, ooh, look, Naughty's using his magnifying glass. What word did he find? House. Nice job. Okay, Naughty, keep. What's the matter? This is what Dashie said when she was out in the sea with the sea snails. Dashie said, I need help. See where it is all the way over on the side? It's got it. Can you do it again? Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you. I see it. Help, nice job. And there's one more word. What's the word that we haven't, hmm, we got out, found in? Stop. That's right, Naughty. You did it. Stop. That was our other word. Awesome. Okay, that activity is all finished. The last thing we have is a field trip to the children's garden. Do you want to go to the children's garden? Yep, as soon as let's play like one activity at the children's garden. So there's all oh, about me and my ice cream and the children's garden. Wouldn't that be fun? Maybe we can do that. Let's see what you might like to do. Oh, here's welcome. Talks about wearing a mask. The anarchy zone where we can build or make. Then we can go oh, the story walk. Do you want to read? Raya. Okay, I'm testing my microphone. So let me know if it works. Sorry about that. Yes. Yeah. Nope, that's perfect. We can hear you. Okay, we're back. So I'm sorry, 
because my mouse wasn't working. I plugged in a different mouse. So here you could have read that, you might not have heard what I said, but just sort of like having clear expectations for family and caregivers. And of course, you know, my favorite thing of embedding any supports that we can, which might be um, the icons or like that YouTube timer, um, things like that, just to make it easier for yourself in the moment. So that's the end of our example. Um, and here is just kind of a um, sort of funny picture that I had to take at the end of my session because I cut this down a lot and um, we lasted 20 minutes. And as you can see here, um, I ended with two empty chairs. The, my student was gone. Um, I hadn't finished everything that I planned. We hadn't got through 30 minutes. And um, this was just kind of funny to reflect on for myself because like obviously it's my daughter. I know what she likes. I custom made every activity to hold her attention. And even then, like under the best of circumstances, um, it, she still was gone. So that kind of made me feel a little bit better about when this happens um, with students that I don't know as well or don't know what they like, um, that I'm like, okay, permission to just sort of like let, that's okay, that's okay. We did 20 minutes and that <laughs> that's good enough for us. Um, so I mentioned, I think to myself a minute ago when my microphone was off, that it's really easier um, for the caregiver or the communication partner to support when your expectations are clear um, and simple, when the activity is simple and it's easy for them to see what your target is. So I love being open-ended with my students and letting them say whatever it is they want. I tried to do that in the example. Um, of course, it's easy to be critical of yourself and say, oh, why did I do that? Um, but anyhow, like I said, my husband said that his favorite activity and the one that was easiest for him to support was that really simple one with Naughty and the magnifying glass because it was just the expectation was clear of what the target word was. It, of course, wasn't as open ended for um, the student, but, you know, there's always going to be a balance. So we want to be challenging for our students and really pushing them into their growth areas. But we also want to give opportunities for success. So for that naughty activity to wrap it up when she was really just kind of labeling that was like not a very naturalistic activity. It was sort of like, here's a picture and tell me what it is. But it's still um, she was able to be successful because it was the words that we had targeted for the whole 20 minutes. Um, and so kind of balancing where we're pushing um, kids to do new things, but also we're doing, we're giving opportunities for success and we're planning for them to be successful. Because the other thing was um, that I noticed when I gave her the options of do you want to do Octonauts or Naughty, I didn't have those things in her device. So I was setting her up for failure because I asked her a question and of course she can verbally say what she wanted, but on the device, if she was an AAC user, she wouldn't have been able to do that. So um, I thought, wow, that really reminds me to pre-plan so that I know my students can respond to the things that I'm asking them to. We're almost out of time. We have like two more slides left. So just my general thoughts of really, I watched that video and I reflected and that really helped me get some, get some new tips. Um, so focusing on interests, I think that really did help. It was her favorite characters and she's actually since then asked to do that Octonauts thing again. Um, so that's kind of funny. Um, helping people set the scene, so being clear about what your expectations are and how they can set up their environment for success. Um, one of my students I'm seeing this summer, a way that we set the scene, his mom and I, is we brainstorm ideas of like, he rides his bike before he sits down for a teletherapy. I build in movement breaks and we talk together about what he needs to be able to sit in front of a computer for 30 minutes because that's not easy. Um, being prepared yet flexible. So I think that's really important um, to have options. Like I have this whole stack of my books and my physical activities so I can fall back on that. I know where all my things are in my Google Drive so that I have an idea in my head of what I want to do. But if I need to change on the spot, I'm also prepared to do that. And again, that last bullet was just what I said about making sure your students are able to participate. So really my closing thought is um, just to focus on the engagement with your student rather than fancy tech tools. So I love sharing these new activities that I've made or that I found. Um, I think it's super fun. Um, I love that aspect, but if we are 
if it's too kind of complicated on our end for mirroring the iPad or whatever it is, the most important thing is that you're engaged in connecting with your students. At least that's how I feel. Um, and that also kind of allows myself to, to give myself permission to mess up or um, to do something wrong or when something goes wrong or like that children's garden activity, I spent a lot of time on that and my daughter just walked away from it. So um, she was not engaged with me and wasn't connecting. So obviously that fancy activity that I took forever to make wasn't enough in that situation. So what would I do to get her engagement back? Um, so just our very, very last perfect timing, 1.30. This is where you can find me on social media. It's at S Gregory SLP. So like I said, um, follow me on Instagram. That's my Twitter handle too. And send me messages. I love connecting with people. Um, I do that all the time when people share something on their story. I'll message them and then it's just like a really fun way to have a quick conversation. Um, and we feel like we're friends even though we've never met each other, which is awesome. Feel free to email me. Um, if you put a question in the chat, I know that Heather or Beth will organize the questions, send them to me. Um, we're not gonna have time to answer questions, but I promise I will answer them. Um, I will send you an email um, to answer. I know the slides, you're not able to click on the slides. Heather told me that. So I am definitely going to right now, as soon as I get off, I'll fix that so that you can get the slides. Um, you can get into the wakelet and that's it. Thank you, Sarah. That was amazing. Um, thank you to all of our participants for joining today. Um, don't forget, if you're going to do the ASHA CEU registry, please submit all that information to us um, in the next 15 days at info at printrom.com. And um, uh, you'll get a follow-up email within about 24 hours. Give us that 24 hours. The link for the recordings should be active next week. Um, so check it out on our PRC brand YouTube channel, as well as the Saltillo and Touch Chat YouTube channels um, sometime next week. And she'll get those questions answered and we can share those with you all. We hope you enjoyed this guest webinar and look forward to seeing you in the future webinars. Thank you again, Sarah. Yeah, thank you.